In this video, I'm gonna share with you an update on our winter greenhouse, which has geothermal or a climate battery, and what happened with a crazy blizzard, as well as just general winter conditions. So let's get right to it. I'm Natalie Lucier from Waykeeper Farm and Nerdery, and this is our geothermal slash climate battery greenhouse. And I'm gonna share with you, first of all, the recap of what that is exactly and how we set up our system, and then also what we experienced in that whole once in a century blizzard. The way we set up this greenhouse House is that before we installed the frame and put everything up, we dug underneath and put some pipes down that will circulate the air with giant fans in this greenhouse so that during the day when the sun is out, the greenhouse is hotter, we take that hot air and we store it underground. And then at night we run the fans again to recirculate that hot air and keep the greenhouse warmer at night. At least that's the theory. And this winter we're putting it to the test. At the end of December, 2022, we experienced a crazy blizzard here in the Niagara region, just on the other side of Buffalo, New York. So we are on the other side of Lake Erie and we had just as much lake effect snow and we had 100 kilometer an hour winds sustained for over 24 hours. So that's 60 miles an hour winds. And we just had so many issues with this storm. We got trees that got blown over, our greenhouse panel completely popped out. Not all of the panels, but just one small one. And unfortunately we had to fix that right during the storm. And that was extremely difficult because it was so windy and we were able to patch it up or at least my husband was. So I was actually out of town for that storm. I missed all of the craziness of it, but I will say that it got down to minus 14 Celsius and there were a lot of casualties. A lot of people lost power. There were just so many issues with this storm. So it was definitely called the blizzard of a century. Some people also called it just the once in a lifetime blizzard. So yeah, it was insane in terms of crazy results. So how did our greenhouse withstand it and what happened to the plants inside the greenhouse? So first of all, we found some cracks and some places around the perimeter of the greenhouse that were not completely closed up. So we had snow coming into the greenhouse around the edges and the doors and places where it wasn't fully sealed up. And so that was one of the main things that we experienced because it was so windy. Then, like I said, that panel popped out of our greenhouse and we had to quickly fix it. And so that really plummeted the temperatures down in the greenhouse. And so what we realized very quickly is that it was gonna freeze in the greenhouse. And that was something that we were kind of ready for we weren't quite sure what to expect, but because of that storm, we lost all of our tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, ginger, all of the heat loving plants that we had in the greenhouse. Now, that being said, the greenhouse still provided a ton of protection to the plants. The wind was not completely in the greenhouse. And so we were able to salvage a lot of plants, like all of our brassicas, carrots, uh, everything that was really sort of winter hardy to begin with was able to withstand that negative temperature. So here are the daikon radish and when we come in in the morning, if we didn't have a hot day before, then the climate battery is not charged up and these plants just look really sad. They're just all wilted and they just look completely down. So this is our, you can see it got a teeny bit of frost damage right here as well. These will be some Brussels sprouts that are coming and you can see here some flowers, some uh, snapdragons, that are in the middle of the greenhouse are doing totally fine. They don't have any issues. And I think it's just where they're located. So we've got some nice broccoli coming over here as well. And then this is some parsley still doing well. And you can see, you know, some things are doing better than others. Some things are being affected a lot more than others. These broccolis will be really great in maybe a week or two or maybe three. And you can see we still have some carrots coming up that are totally in good shape. And now we've removed all of the wall of tomatoes and peppers that we had here. I still have not cut back the eggplants. I will <laughs> come in and do that soon. But you can see some things made it through, some things did not. Uh, some of these flowers here are a little bit too frost tender. So we'll definitely be clearing those out as well. And um, you can see our fig tree still has figs on it. It lost all of its leaves and I don't think those figs are gonna be edible. So maybe not this year, but hopefully next year we'll get some figs. And some flowers are still doing pretty well here too. 
Now that being said, the structure of the greenhouse definitely protected the plants and we didn't have any brassicas, carrots, or any of the other semi-hardy plants die on us. So we were able to still salvage a ton of plants and we learned a lot in the process of this storm. After this crazy blizzard, the snow melted fairly quickly and then we just ended up in several weeks of just gray weather. No sunshine, not too cold, but at the same time, there was no sun to heat up the greenhouse. So we quickly realized that running the fans in the greenhouse was not doing much because we didn't have much heat to store into the bottom of the greenhouse. And so we just stopped running it. We kind of got a little complacent. And then we got a very cold frost at night and it started getting even colder in the greenhouse. So one of the places I heard about doing this type of geothermal climate battery for greenhouses is from people in Colorado where it tends to be very sunny most of the year. And that was a big realization is that in Ontario, here, we don't get that much sun in the winter because we have a lot of cloud cover. Our sun doesn't go as high up in the sky anymore. It's lower down towards the horizon. And so we do have a lot less heat happening during the day in the greenhouse. So right now it's actually 13 degrees Celsius in the greenhouse. It's a sunny day, it's fairly sunny, as sunny as it'll get for now. And we really have not had a lot of days like this. Most days it would go up to maybe five degrees in the greenhouse if we were lucky. And that's because it was just cloudy and overcast most days. Based on my research, it sounds like that's something that's fairly common and that happens when it's not too cold. When you have the colder weather, the sun can come out a little bit more. If there's still a lot of clouds and precipitation and stuff, that tends to keep the clouds in place and stops the sun from reaching the greenhouse. So what are our big learnings from this blizzard and also just from those weeks and weeks of no sunshine and not being able to run the climate battery because there's just no heat to store? Well, what we've realized is that there are plants that do really awesome, even in a little bit of cold. So for example, our brassicas, like our broccoli, our kale, our uh, cabbages, all of those kind of wilt in those negative degrees. But then as soon as it perks back up in the middle of the day, they also perk back up. So we've found that yes, there are plants you can grow all year, even if we don't have a climate battery. So that's great news if you didn't install a climate battery in your particular greenhouse. So the choice of plants that you grow in your greenhouse is super important. And I'll do a whole other video about winter growing in a greenhouse without heat or without a climate battery. But another thing we realized is that because this is such a big structure, it's 100 feet by 25 feet wide, we're able to do something that maybe smaller greenhouses can't, and that is bring in some compost or some wood chips and just make a giant pile and let it heat up. So that's our plan for next winter is we're probably gonna have two piles, one in each end, because the ends and the sides tend to be the coldest parts of the greenhouse. The middle didn't freeze as much and it's definitely where we're putting all of our most tender plants so that they can really overwinter the best. But that's our plan for next year. There's definitely benefits to having a smaller greenhouse where you could bring in a heater or something just for those very cold nights that you might get. And so that is, kind of pros and cons of small versus big greenhouses. You might have a smaller one that's less area to heat and just an electric heater or something else could work really well for that. For us, it's too big. We can't bring an electric heater. I don't think it'll quite work that way. We would have to have several uh, all throughout the greenhouse. So we're thinking of doing more of a natural method where just having those compost piles that are heating up. We might also bring some giant water uh, containers and barrels and just kind of keep those as a heat sink as well. So that'll be something to try. And so we have tons of ideas for next year, what we want to do differently. At the same time, I do want to say that we were kind of sick of picking tomatoes and eating them. So in a way, it was sort of a blessing in disguise because now we've cleared out all those tomato plants and pepper plants, and then we'll be getting ready to start our spring ones again very soon. So I feel like it was a good lesson. We knew coming into this first season of the greenhouse in the winter that we weren't sure if it was going to freeze or not. And so yes, confirmation, it did freeze in here and we have a lot to learn still. So if you have any tips or advice on keeping a greenhouse a little bit above freezing at least throughout the winter, I would love to hear them in the comments below. And now if you wanna find out about what things look like in November before everything died off, then watch that video now.